This world, shrouded in darkness, is being ravaged by monsters. Rats the size of a car, snakes the length of a train, ferocious birds, huge as an airplane. However, this is still nothing. The problem is the legendary creatures who are the real rulers of the world, and people can only fight in endless despair. Fortunately, the Stargate appeared and gave desperate humanity the last hope. Those who are not deprived of talent have a chance to enter the gate and awaken incredible abilities in order to become heroes. After all, they are the only ones who can fight back against monsters. City of Dawn, a community of heroes. Suddenly, a loud scream is heard inside a building. One man throws a guy out of the building with his foot, forcing him to fall and ride almost all the way to the fountain. The latter barely rises on trembling hands and calls out to Fan Bin, coughing. He says that 10 years ago his parents risked their lives to save him during the disaster. They accepted him as their own son and with their help he became awakened. Their kindness was the size of a mountain. And he himself did not expect that the man would stab him in the back and try to take away his home. Although his parents disappeared less than a month ago. Ungrateful bastard. The man only calls out to be Jin and asks if he really doesn't understand why he's taking the family property. Yes, five generations of the Bay family have indeed lived in this house for more than a hundred years. But so what? Let him not forget that all the houses in this territory belong to the six guilds of the Awaken. Another man also addresses Bi Jin, informing him that he turned 18 today, but he still hasn't awakened his abilities. According to the general rules, those who have not reached awakening by this age lose their right to reside in the territory of the Awakened community. And therefore, as an adopted child, Fan Bing automatically inherits the right to inherit this mansion. Everything is according to the law. Indignation is unnecessary. But Bei only shouts out that they have not convinced him and that they are working together. There are many people who have not awakened by the age of 18, but continue to live here. So why should he be thrown out? That's what his ancestors get for their sacrifice in the name of the city. The lawyer, apparently, hits the guy in the face, shouting out how audacious it all is. How dare he, an ordinary person, doubt the rules of the six guilds? Did you want to die? After that, the man turns around and calls out to Fan Bing, saying that he will leave it to him and he will leave first. And then he also adds, so that, by the way, he does not forget what he promised him. Bean agrees with Mr. Song and tells him not to worry, as he will fulfill his promise. He watches the man walk out of the gate before his face darkens, and then he looks in surprise at Jin, who managed to barely get up from his seat. That's just not allowed to do it definitively, because the man immediately kicks him on the chest, forcing him to fall back. Fan calls out to Bay again, and adds that he forgot to tell him that being recognized as a genius since childhood, does he know why he still could not awaken his class? And all because he began to poison him a little from the age of 10. The monthly intake of the Grey Crystal Lizard's poison was constantly destroying his body. And how could he have awakened his skills in such a situation? The guy can only exclaim what in surprise, and then ask why he did it, to which Bean tells Jin with a grin that he is so naive. The houses in this district are built near the Stargate, which is the best and safest place in the whole city of Dawn, especially this mansion of his. And then he oops and adds that he's his now. Such proximity to the gate is a huge help for his growth and in addition it is very safe here. He frowns and asks what it means. He planned it all from the very beginning. The interlocutor answers that he is an E-rank thief, so his maximum was to rent an apartment in the outback. But if he doesn't wake up and his parents die, then he, as an adopted son, will inherit this house. Jin grunts and shouts out how blind his family was that they sheltered such a viper, to which the latter only grins and thanks him for the compliment. Then Fan leans over to him and adds that he forgot to mention that he told his parents some news. And this time they sent him on an adventure to give him one last opportunity to awaken his powers, even despite the great danger. Of course, they didn't hesitate to set off. What a wonderful parental love. The guy immediately grabs his head, calling his mother and father, adding that Fan Bin is a complete bastard and a bastard. But then the latter gives him a kick with his foot and orders such a useless person to go away from here. And as soon as he turns out to be outside the gate, he adds that slums are perfect for trash like him. After some time, he still manages to get up from his seat. Jin calls Fan Bin a bastard again, and then turns his head in his direction, adding that he will come back and he will definitely see it. The latter only seems to throw a stone at him from behind the gate, thinking to himself that, although he has lost and no longer poses a threat, but the best garbage is dead garbage. Bay trudges down the street, thinking to himself that the pain is so severe that he has less and less strength left. Was he dying? He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to. But after a while he falls to the floor from exhaustion, immediately. A hole appears in the sky, and then a bright flash of lightning, similar to a comet, which flies in his direction and soon collides with the body. This something immediately clings to Jin and gives him a kind of yellow aura. He immediately opens his eyes in surprise and then adds to himself that he did not think that the legendary secret technique of reincarnation would still work. 
He was reborn. Meanwhile, a man calls out to Chan Feng and asks him why, because he has always treated him like his own child. The girl only apologizes to the master and adds that if he does not die, then she will have to live in his shadow and so she will never become the strongest goddess of war in the world. The other man only calls out to Meng Jinsheng and adds that he is an ignorant warrior. The power of the great demon god is beyond her imagination, since he dares to think about fighting him. The master says that means they have been leading him by the nose all this time. The idea of joining forces to kill the demon god and end this dark age is just as wishful thinking. They completely forgot about their oath to protect humanity, and wallowed in their own greed. Instead, they see him as a threat and want to maintain their power. But do they really think they can beat him like this? Well, no. He, Meng Jinsheng, is the strongest warrior known to mankind and the only SSS rank god of war. How can he fall so easily? He will come back and become stronger than before. And soon a bright circle appears in its place, which immediately wraps its color around his body and directs him upwards. This was the legendary secret technique of reincarnation. Soon only his armor falls to the floor, once in Bei's body. He says that Tan Fang and they, the assholes, should just wait. Since he survived, he will eradicate their sins one by one. But then Shen asks out loud what's wrong with this body, is it poisoned? It seems to be the poison of a grey crystal lizard from the dark world. The ability of an E-ranked thief. The body is so weakened due to long poisoning that the internal organs are already in holes. It is simply destroyed. What can we say about the awakening of the class? How could his soul choose such a useless shell? These are the memories of this boy. Adoption, missing parents, collusion, betrayal. What an ungrateful brother. Because of similar circumstances, his soul chose him. Did he have such a strong will before he died? Well, in that case, he, Ming Jinsheng, will fulfill it. Immediately, he notices aloud that his soul has completely dissipated, reincarnation is complete. He really became the master of this body. However, it is so weak that the chance of becoming a hero is less than one in a million, not to mention returning to the previous level. It will be difficult to fulfill even his last wish. Snorting, the man asks out loud, and what's the big deal here? In his previous life, as the strongest SSS rank god of war, he made the impossible possible. He has mastered a huge amount of skill. There must be something that will improve his physical strength and allow him to change fate against the will of heaven. Shen begins to think which secret technique would be better suited. Exactly. The law of nirvana is the six ways of reincarnation. He had acquired the legendary secret art of the six paths of reincarnation along with reincarnation itself in the mysterious lands of the void. Once reincarnation has proven its effectiveness, then the six ways of this very reincarnation should work. If he mastered it, he would definitely be able to change this body and gain even more power than in his previous life. However, in order to transform, he first needs to enter the Stargate to awaken. His name is Bi Jin now, and it is with this name that he will return to the top and become the strongest in the world. City of Dawn, Stargate the guy thinks to himself that the city of Dawn is located in the southern part of the planet. It's a long way from the heavenly city located in the north where he used to live. So he was thrown from north to south. He is away from the influence of Tanfang. The most important thing is to secretly become stronger. The city of Dawn is the largest city in the south. There really are a lot of awakened ones here. He was like them, fighting day and night in wild places to increase strength and achieve the dream of becoming a god of war. Approaching the reception desk, Sheng says that he wants to apply to participate in the awakening. The man replies to Bi Jin, informs him that he has already tried twice this month and failed both. Although his father is the captain of the awakened group, and he is entitled to free attempts, but with his potential, he can forget about awakening. Already quieter to himself, the interlocutor adds that this is just a waste of resources. Immediately, Meng frowns and asks what he said before ordering him to repeat. He is just about to answer something but only thinks to himself that this happened and why he suddenly became like this. But immediately the captain of the guard Chai Bo bumps into him with his shoulder, who asks what happened. He just greets Captain Chai intensely, starting to tell something. Jin only thinks that according to this body's memories, when Chai Bo was young, he was saved by Bei Jin's parents. How will he treat the son of his benefactors after the changes in the Bei family? Will he behave like Fan Bing? But the man immediately shouts at the employee that he is a dumbass adding that the Bei family has been a family of awakened for generations. They have made a great contribution to the development of the city and does it really have any problems to accept the application. And then the captain asks where the star map of awakening is. After a couple of seconds, he calls out to Bi Jin and invites him to take the star card and take part in the awakening. And in a whisper he already adds that if he fails this time, then let him look for shelter. Bo advises him not to stay on the territory of the awakened residents, as it is dangerous. And then the man leaves. Meng thinks to himself that Chai Bo is the person who knows how to repay gratitude. Soon, he climbs the stairs to the shiny and bright stargate. The star map immediately rises up by itself and soon gets sucked in, disappearing into the portal. 
After that, the guy himself enters it, appearing in some room with many golden silhouettes. He winces and thinks to himself about what's going on. Is this body unable to withstand even the pressure of the place of awakening? Which is not surprising, because he was poisoned for so many years. It will be extremely difficult to achieve awakening. A potential test subject resonates with the stars, enters into a contract, and then can wake up. The more starlight he attracts, the more transformation his body will undergo. This promises a huge advantage and a bright future. And those who could not get into resonance with the stars end up ordinary people in rotten poverty. Jin realizes that although there is a star resonating with this body, but its condition is too weak, it's impossible to get a normal amount of starlight and make a contract, let alone wake up. However, he foresaw it, judging by the light of this star. Even if he gets it and can awaken, the transformation will not be complete. If Sheng wants to come back, he'll have to take the risk and give his all. He decides to try the legendary secret art of the six ways of reincarnation. It is necessary to ignite a huge amount of spiritual power and summon the wheel of the six paths. Then gather the light power of countless stars, purify the essence and transform your body. In his previous life, the power of his soul was strong, and although he suffered losses after rebirth, but the power of his soul should remain strong enough. Immediately, he orders this very soul force to light up, which works because soon his body is surrounded by a whole fiery vortex, which soon transforms even into a hurricane, but then dissipates, showing Bei, who stands in the middle of the circle and orders the wheel of six paths to activate. Immediately, a star flashes brightly in the sky and the very circle from which a yellow and fiery ray soon falls on the man, and then the body begins to quickly disappear in this huge glow, while the rest of the people can only guess what just happened. And how can starlight shine like the sun? Has someone woken up? From such an amount of starlight should be completely transformed. Jin himself says out loud that this is a success and the six ways of reincarnation have proved themselves worthy. Taking the initiative and attracting stars for resonance is an ingenious solution. However, this is only the first step. Now, soon the egg cracks and Meng appears, who says it's time to curb the flame of starlight. The real awakening begins now. To awaken the class, you need to withstand the extinction of this flame. Although he has experienced a lot in all his years, it really hurts, but for him it is nothing. The man screams loudly and then breathes heavily when the flames only flare up more. But then it gradually goes out, turning into smoke, which makes him ask out loud if it's really over. Does the power of the stars attracted by the six paths of reincarnation have to be so simple? And then some huge purple ball appears behind him. Bay grins and adds that now it looks like the truth. He orders this ball to move, which immediately frames his body with purple flames. And then he adds out loud that a third star flame has appeared. First orange, then blue, then green, and then more purple. And standing in a circle of all six, he only wonders if the six paths of reincarnation correspond to the six types of flame of the stars. Such an awakening is unprecedented and dangerous. But the greater the danger, the greater the benefits. Shang adds out loud that he will use this to harden the body, and then orders Nirvana to revive it from the ashes. Inside, there is a rebirth, purification of the essence. He continues to sit in a kind of egg for a while. But soon his shell begins to crack, falling apart, and soon the hero himself appears from the inside, who clenches his fists. Jin says out loud that the body has been restored and the poison has been completely removed. The six paths of reincarnation deserve to be a legendary secret art that can change fate. Now the awakening is complete and what has he awakened? What? It is surrounded by a circle with six peculiar classes. After awakening, the body improves depending on the awakened class. The strong physique of a warrior. The speed and agility of a thief. The insight of a magician. The sharp vision of an archer. The unshakable will of a knight. The specific perception of the summoner. What? Did he wake up the sixth grade? Is it really all thanks to the art of the six ways of reincarnation? Meng says that he knows a lot from his past life, but he barely heard a couple of times that a person had at least two classes, and he suddenly got them all. With such a body, he will surely surpass his past self. Let these freaks just wait, because his revenge will not take long to wait. But then the ceiling begins to crack, and the man says that the starry space has begun to dissipate, the awakening procedure will end soon. It's time to leave. Appearing from the port, Bijin is hailed by a fan who reports that even if he crawled out of the slums, then why the hell did he come to wake up? He's just garbage wasting resources. Immediately, the interlocutor sends him far away, which makes Bean open his eyes in surprise. But Meng just passes by him, which causes a tense look. My brother shouts that he is a goat and how dare he talk to him like that. And he swears to himself and thinks that maybe after the last poisoning he should not have died. If so, then he would just kill him himself. He pulls out his weapon and continues to say that the trash dared not to listen to him and today, on behalf of his parents, he will teach him a lesson. And when Bean goes to him, Jin orders him to stop, because if he dares. But Fang only uses the bronze-ranked talent, jerk and snake attack, 
calling out to Bei Jin and shouting so that he doesn't blame him for it. Meng just grins and thinks that the bronze rank jerk and snake attack are the skills of an E rank thief, he really intends to kill him. But thieves have to hide and carry out hidden attacks. Given the experience of the strongest god of war, he sees a lot of open places in such a useless attack. Besides, now he has awakened as many as six classes. Even if they have a difference of two ranks, he can just slap him in the face. The punch was so strong that Bean flies back at all. Immediately it is noticed by other people who wonder in surprise that really this garbage Bijin sent an E-rank thief flying with a single blow. Fan jumps to the side, indignantly thinking about whether he really could get it. One punch and, no, nonsense, he must have been lucky. Jin only thinks that he has just awakened, so he does not have class skills yet. Taking advantage of the surprise effect, he was able to hit this cretin, but that's not enough to beat him. Out loud, the man calls out to Fan Bing and says that he openly intended to kill someone who had just passed the awakening. The guy only asks if he wants to go to jail before he calls out to Chai Bo who appeared and informs him that he has tried to wake up many times. But everything is to no avail, and he knows it perfectly well. He should be fired for abuse of power, because he gives such scum a chance and covers them. The captain replies that it is not this sucker to teach him life. As for the awakening of Bi Jin, anyone with sight can confirm it. Immediately, other voices begin to be heard saying that Bei Jin's blow was strong. An ordinary person is not capable of such a thing. He suppressed the attack of an E-ranked thief and Fan Bing, though e rank, but he was smacked right in the face. Although warriors are not strong in direct clashes, but an ordinary person would not be able to parry such an attack. My brother thinks that this is impossible. His body had been under the influence of the poison for so long that it began to collapse. Is it possible to awaken a class with such a body? No way in life. Captain Chai Bo is now the time that highlights on the Jin. The screen shows that Bi Jin has an awakened warrior class. The man immediately reports it out loud, adding that this explains his blow. Again, people from the crowd begin to say that Fan Bin was unlucky. Because being a thief, he attacked a warrior head on, well, she fooled him. Did he really awaken the warrior class? When the man woke him up, for some reason he wasn't so strong. Sheng himself thinks that the awakening of the six classes is too shocking an event. If they find out about this, then someone strong can target him, and then he will be in trouble. Fortunately, his soul is strong, and he hit his aura with soul power. Therefore, everyone sees only the warrior class. Chai calls out to the guy and says that she congratulates him, and his parents would definitely be proud of him, since he has awakened. Then let him go to the Guild of Warriors to study and improve. The man also asks him to try to discover the accompanying talent in himself in order to become a real high-level awakened. The card says Warrior Apprentice. He has already lost a lot of time, so let him not delay. Meng agrees, adding that he will try, and then calls out to his uncle and asks when the monthly talent assessment will take place. Bo replies that it is today, and then asks if he sees these armored vehicles. This is a group that leaves the city to evaluate talents. But why is he asking? Chai is interested in whether he is planning to conduct an assessment now, to which the interlocutor agrees, saying that he correctly assumed everything. The man immediately asks if he is crazy, before explaining that the guy knows that only one attempt is given. He's finally awakened, so does he really want to just lose his only chance? When people undergo awakening, they are given the status of disciple. Students study and improve their abilities in the guild for 1 minus 3 years. Having received enough knowledge, they go to the talent assessment. Only there can you get an accompanying class talent. After that, they begin to be considered real awakened. The captain explains that the accompanying talent is a passive skill. Each class can get only one such. He can be both good and bad. This determines his further achievements. He needs to prepare well. And then he will be able to show himself well at the assessment. This is the key to getting a good talent. Bo calls out to Bi Jin and says he should take this seriously. The guy just smiles and asks his uncle not to worry, as he is completely sure. After that, many students go to those very wagons and carts. Fan Bing says out loud that his brother has just woken up and already wants to pass a talent assessment. What an arrogance. He poses a threat alive, so we need to think about how to get rid of him. Meng himself thinks about what an ungrateful bastard the thief is, and still plans to kill him. When he gets the accompanying talent and becomes a real awakened one, then this worthless E-ranked thief. Huh. The light of the Stargate enveloped the city. There are a lot of creepy monsters lurking outside of it. They are extremely evil and fiercely crave human souls. Individually, the monsters are afraid of the light of the Stargate and do not dare to approach the city. But if enough monsters gather, their thirst overcomes fear, and this catastrophic wave sweeps over the city. In the history of mankind, there are many cities captured by monsters. When the Stargate is destroyed and the starlight goes out, countless people become food for monsters. Thus, it doesn't matter how many awakened ones resist the catastrophic wave and protect the city. This is a war in which the awakened sacrifice themselves and become martyrs in defense of humanity. 
Each martyr invokes the light of the Stargate with an indomitable will and gains immortality under the cover of starlight. Many tombstones emit a huge amount of stellar energy, distort space and create a special dimension known as the Land of the Gifts of Starlight. There, every newly awakened person takes part in the evaluation of talent for the continuation of the glory of the ancestors. They receive the accompanying talent inherited from their predecessors. The van, which is subjected to a similar assessment, rushes along the highway. Inside, Shen thinks that the magician's insight is really useful, and he has almost read such a thick book with the title Heroes of the City of Dawn. The undead mostly live near the city, so it is worth focusing on monsters of this type. Although the trials differ from city to city, but most of the rules of the Land of the Gifts of Starlight are unchanged. In his previous life, he was born into an ordinary family, without any support from his elders. It was a miracle that he was able to obtain a gold rank concomitant talent back then. The talent of the gold rank is one ten thousandth people, the talent of the silver rank is one one thousandth people, the talent of the bronze rank is one one hundredth people. An iron rank talent can be obtained by one to ten people, but the majority gets the lowest. And one out of hundreds of thousands or even millions gets an epic rank talent. This time he can aim higher. Maybe you can get an epic talent. According to legend, to do this, you need to enter the deepest part of the Starlight Lands. Immediately, they are soon informed that they have arrived, which is why all the students begin to discuss everything violently. Someone hopes that he will receive the accompanying skill of the bronze rank, because then he will get rich. Another orders him not to dream, because only one out of a hundred gets it. And then they notice Bi Jin. Someone wonders if he really woke up, and the other grins and replies that relying on the means of parents and having exhausted so many attempts, even a pig would wake up. Reading a book in such a place, maybe he was stupefied after waking up. Meng thinks about the fact that these guys became awakened disciples and studied for three years in large guilds. But why are they so ignorant? Although it is logical, most likely, the guilds provide only basic knowledge. The really valuable information is distributed among the high-ranking awakened. Fools do not know that at the trial of the lands of the gifts of starlight, the most important thing is not strength, but wisdom, will and courage. Immediately, someone asks if it's Lin Zai from the Lin family, awakened at the age of 11, the greatest genius. Strange, she had awakened the class five years ago, so shouldn't she have passed the talent assessment earlier? Why did she come just now? Someone advises the interlocutor to forget, adding that they do not understand geniuses. Meng himself is also thinking, from a rich family. The aura is not strong, not stronger than an ordinary awakened disciple, but it has a dense concentration of soul power. The keepers of the graves of the lands of the gifts of starlight immediately appear. Zai Gong, 34 years old, senior member of the Dawn City Archers Guild, C rank combat ability. Duan Jia, 36 years old, senior member of the Dawn City Warrior Guild, C rank combat ability. The latter adds that he heard that the daughter of the Lin family awakened the archer class at the age of 11. It has been preparing for so many years. Apparently, the assessment will be fruitful. It seems that his guild of archers will receive a real treasure. Zai only replies that they won't judge so quickly. The evaluation of talent depends on luck. It's too early to say such a thing. But he thinks to himself that according to internal information, the Lin family has been preparing all this time, aiming for a high-ranking accompanying talent. They are confident in their abilities. But should I tell him about it? Duan will die of envy. The man wonders if he really thinks so, but then adds that Gong is right. The accompanying talent depends on luck, maybe an iron rank talent will turn out. The archer immediately calls out to him and calls him an asshole, asking if he is really trying to jinx, to which the latter grins and asks if he heard correctly, and then says that he is telling the truth, this has already happened. The man further away thinks that they are arguing again before he orders them not to waste time and to start the assessment faster. The black and yellow silhouette asks if everything is in place, and then begins to say that he believes that they do not need to tell anything about the evaluation of talent, because they already know everything. Before entering the lands of the gifts of starlight, they should pay tribute to the ancestors who rest here. This is their heroic sacrifice, allowing them to continue living in a world full of monsters. Luck smiled on them, and they woke up. Today they are here to continue the legacy of their ancestors. Let them fight for the future of humanity. It is dangerous in these lands. This is their first battle to become real awakened. If they don't take it seriously, they might even die. Zai says that these lands are only open for one day, so they should take advantage of this opportunity. Duan informs that the accompanying talent they will receive will depend on their luck. Immediately a door opens, in which a portal is then shown, from which lightning emanates. The evaluation begins. All the students immediately begin to enter inside, soon finding themselves in the world of the Earth of the Gifts of Starlight. One guy keeps mocking Shen. Asking if he's stupid, or what, he keeps reading a book. He came here unprepared, does he really want to die? But then he has to face a big guy who calls out to him and says that he knows him. 
Coming closer, the student asks if he is by chance the famous garbage of Bi Jin, and then adds that if he wants to memorize books, then let him go and read somewhere in the closet. And noticing his look, the stranger asks what he's staring at, wants him to beat him up, and then orders him to go home at all. But Jin walks by and says that the fat man better take care of himself, before his interlocutor turns around and asks how a trash like him dared to call him a fat man. And then suddenly this very boy is surrounded by a dark dome, and then a blue spirit appears. The fat man entered the heroic spirit evaluation zone. He is immediately surrounded by spiders with human faces, which makes him scream loudly. This is an F-rank monster, a spider with a ghostly face. They're not really awakened yet, so how will they cope with these creatures? Immediately a voice is heard that the heroic exam was failed. Someone is calling everyone to look at the usual white rune of talent. Since the exam failed, the accompanying talent is of a lower rank. There is no bright future for the fat man. Meanwhile, Jin continues to move forward with the book. Many continue to pass the tests. Someone has passed the assessment and received a bronze rank, and therefore thanks the heroic spirit of the ancestor. This is a test of the heroic spirit in the lands of the gifts of starlight. If you pass, you get an accompanying talent of a certain rank from the heroic spirit of the ancestor. But if you failed, then you can only get a talent of a lower rank. He is immediately hailed by Lin Zai who asks if he wants to go deeper, before adding that in the far part of these lands you can get a talent of the highest rank, but the assessment of the spirit will be scarier, even life-threatening. She advises him to think carefully before moving on, but the guy only turns away and thanks the girl for the warning, before adding that he will also give her advice, relying on external forces, it is impossible to pass the assessment of the heroic spirit. She incomprehensibly asks again, external forces, is he really talking about guys nearby? Just in case, the family has prepared E-rank dolls. Even the real awakened ones will not immediately reveal them. He's just a student, so how is he? Meng says out loud that if this book is not lying, then there must be a heroic spirit of a silver rank warrior somewhere nearby. So why hasn't he shown up yet? But then suddenly a bright blue ray flies at him out of nowhere. Noticing this in time, he bounces off, and soon the beam hits the silhouette of a man. The heroic spirit looks puzzled. He apologizes to him and adds that he came to get the accompanying talent of epic rank. But he immediately dissolves, which makes Shen come to the conclusion that perhaps this spirit of the ancestor of the silver rank felt that his soul was different from the rest. The soul energy is really good at attracting their attention. This exam lasts only one day. He can't waste any more time. He needs to get what the guy came here for faster in these lands, except for the dim twinkle of a star. Complete darkness reigns, so it's difficult to orient and it's easy to get lost. Fortunately, all the heroic spirits of the ancestors are recorded here. They can be used as coordinates and find the shortest path. The location of this spirit was correct, so the book was not lying. Then, turning to the right, Jin will get to the farthest part of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight. He immediately begins to move forward in rapid leaps. Along the way, he meets two spirits who appear from the same blue rays and just look at how he turns to them, and then disappear. But why aren't they fighting? Apparently, they underestimated the attractiveness of his soul to the spirits of his ancestors. He apologizes to them and shouts out that he is here for an epic rank talent. The spirits reappear looking at him. Then another one appears, with countless weapons, and the girl he refuses, blushing slightly. Then Meng even apologizes to the yellow spirit. Along the way, he attracted many. It seems that this time he has a high chance of getting an epic rank accompanying talent. But then some rustling is heard in the bushes, to which the hero is distracted. He shouts out that the girl is an idiot, and after all, he warned her. And there, in the dome, there is a real massacre. Lin Zai can only exclaim, what is going on and why is the ancestor of the Lin family so angry? His yellow arrows fall to the ground, and then a muzzle appears from inside, which gradually completely protrudes, sparkling with turquoise flames. The hounds are E-rank skeletons. The girl confirms that the arrows have turned into three E-rank monsters. This is not a heroic spirit exam, the ancestor wants to kill her. Zai tries to call out to the heroic ancestor spirit of the Lin family, saying that she is his descendant, and then wonders why he is trying to kill her. If she offended, she asks him to give at least a reason. The spirit only cries out that she is unworthy, repeating this countless times. His arrow in flight immediately turns into another huge hound, but Lin manages to strike his arrow with a bow, which causes the creature to simply disintegrate. She herself begins to explain that grandfather always said that her abilities are the best of all, and she is the hope for the revival of their family. Why is the ancestor so angry and repeats that she is unworthy? There must be a reason. But the archer pulls the bowstring again, continuing to say that it is unworthy. Zai asks him what she did wrong, and then calls out to the heroic ancestor spirit again and asks him to tell her. Immediately, Sheng also gives his voice, who calls out to the young lady of the Lin family and asks her if she still hasn't realized what exactly she did wrong. The girl immediately asks why he is here. 
Even the spirit is distracted by him, saying that this young man. Lin only reports that after her awakening at the age of 11, she did not relax for a moment. She practiced hard and even underwent severe hardening. Before coming here, she had tempered her soul to the limit of an awakened disciple. She worked so hard on her development so that the heroic ancestor spirit would recognize her. In this century, she is the Lin family's most outstanding genius, as well as an archer with great potential. Zai made every effort to get here, facing the ancestor's spirit today. Even if she dies, she will still shoot an arrow. And when she is surrounded by flames, she wonders if this is really the resonance with the heroic spirit. Meng replies that it looks like it. And then adds that in this exam, the most important thing is not strength, but will encourage. She took two dolls with her, this is not cheating, but still a cowardly act. The girl thinks to herself that so this is what he meant. But who is he? Such a person cannot be unknown in the city of dawn. The exam is passed. Lin mumbles that it's finally over. The spirit stretches out its palm to her, from which a sign appears. She happily shouts out that she has received the ancestor's accompanying talent. Jin adds that this is all not bad, because she received the accompanying talent of the gold rank. It seems that she will have a bright future. The flame soon dissipates altogether. The spirit returns to the grave. The girl awkwardly thanks him, to which he says that it's not worth it. And then, with a serious look, he adds that since she has received a talent, then let her leave here as soon as possible. Heroic ancestral spirits do not cause time, but after many years they can mutate into evil and cruel spirits. And if Lin meets such a person, he will get into a very dangerous situation. She simply replies that it's okay, and then decides to ask, but why did he come here? Because this is the zone of spirits of the golden rank. Bei replies that, of course, he came for the best accompanying rank. The interlocutor asks in surprise, does the guy also want a gold rank talent, really, or something? But his aura is weak compared to the other awakened disciples. The guy just says, what does she even know? Let her just help keep it a secret and not tell anyone about him. The girl just wonders why he always behaves so arrogantly, and then raises that this is a gold rank zone, but he goes even further. Could it be that he is heading to the deepest part of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight? This is the place. This is the deepest part of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight, the so-called projection of the Gates of Hell. Without a doubt, he is on the right track. Immediately, the gate swings open, causing him to bend at the knees. It's pressure. The combat ability of the Guardian monster is at least at the advanced D rank level. The spiritual energy gap is too big. Even if he does not attack him, the spiritual pressure makes itself felt. Even when he's far away, his body can barely stand it. All ranks of spiritual energy, F rank 1 minus 399 points, E rank 400 minus 699 points, D rank 700 minus 999 points, advanced D rank, spiritual energy is more than 900, and the awakened disciple's spiritual energy is only 30. Sheng thinks to himself that although these lands are not entirely based on combat power, but if the body cannot withstand this so-called experience, wisdom and courage will be useless. The concentration of spiritual energy is dozens of times higher than in the outside world. This is the best place to develop. It's been a few hours since the assessment started. He still has time, so it's worth getting stronger faster. The secret art from the past life of Endless Gong Kai. It's worth a try. Endless Gong Kai is a secret technique of epic rank that he accidentally obtained in a past life. If there are different reasons why he was able to achieve so much then, but this technique was irreplaceable. A blue circle immediately forms behind him. Jin realizes that energy is being absorbed faster than in the past. Is it because he got six classes, and as a result of the buff, his absorption rate increased? There is a dense concentration of energy here. Meng can absorb it as he wants. At such a rate, to get results that it takes others years, he will come out in one day. The amount of spiritual energy, 31, 32. After the amount of spiritual energy increases to 51, 52. After some time, the amount of spiritual energy takes 99. The amount of spiritual energy has reached the maximum level for a student of 99 points. Before receiving the accompanying skill, he is unable to become a real awakened. His body also cannot absorb more spiritual energy. But a spiritual energy of 99 points and a power increased by 6 times should be enough. A hound is lying on the steps near the gate door. Soon she turns her head at him. Sheng wonders aloud if this is really a hellhound, the most ferocious d rank monster. Especially, the soul bone fire on their bodies is enough to burn the soul. Terrifying, it seems that other spirits even gathered, who began to discuss it violently. After hundreds of years, has someone finally come to be evaluated? Others ask him to wait until he overcomes the hellhound. The hero takes a deep breath and adds out loud that in the end, it's just a puppy with a piece of the soul of hell Cerberus. Immediately, she rushes at him and seems to be using spiritual energy suppression. He says that if this had happened earlier, he would have been scared, but now this type of suppression of spiritual energy is useless against him. 
and then Jin uses Endless Gong Kai, a breakthrough. The hellhound opens its mouth wide while the hero moves quickly under its paws, and then, in one second, he inflicts a wound on her thigh with his blade. As expected, with his current fighting power, he can barely scratch it. Jumping up and down, Shen shouts out that he is just a weak puppy. The hound immediately screams loudly, which causes an explosive wave. Aloud, the guy adds that after the provocation, his enemy got angry. The hellhound immediately rushes forward at him in an instant, and when there are a few meters left, it opens its mouth wide, showing fangs and tongue. Immediately everything goes dark, and then Meng suddenly sticks his head out of her nose, finding himself right in front of her muzzle. He says that in the end, it's just the grounds for evaluating the awakening of the students. Where would they get a real D-rank hellhound for the sake of evaluation? His fingers are instantly folded and then given a snap to the puppy. The spirit instantly crumbles into small fragments. The hero again says that being a student, he is strong, but how much stronger he can become. In these lands, the key to success is wisdom, will and courage. As soon as he provoked him, the hound got angry. Real hellhounds are immortal, and like all immortal creatures, emotions are alien to them, not to mention falling into a rage. This is just a projection to scare the candidate. Check if he has the fighting skills and courage to resist such a monster. Soon, the dark gate opens completely right in front of Shen, letting him in. So this is the so-called gates of hell. He adds out loud that he is a little excited. The guy soon passes completely inside, and the gates are gradually closing behind him. The farthest corner of these lands looks like this. It doesn't look like hell. Rather, it looks like a valley of sacrifices. Is there an epic rank for sure? But then he gets distracted by something and bends down, shouting curses, when a huge fiery ray appears above him. Has this aura reached S rank? Shen exclaims to himself, what a power and that it won't take long to die like that. A bright flame with a sword stops right in front of his face, forcing him to look up. In front of him, a whole column of fire immediately rises, in which a silhouette looms. A heroic spirit of epic rank who points a weapon at him, but Jin asks him to stop. They stand opposite each other when their bodies are framed by a yellow flame, glowing brightly. The guy calls out to the elder and asks him to stop doubting, since he didn't get here because of his luck and wants to see what the epic rank is capable of. The man asks him, is he really a simple student, but dared to come here? Does he really want to see what an epic rank spirit is capable of? Is he tired of living? He explains that in homage to his past life, he offers to test it not by negotiation. In the end, the main thing on this test is strength. Otherwise, the spirit admits that it cannot compete even with a disciple, and he thinks to himself that it seems that the spirit of epic rank has preserved all the knowledge from his past life, so he will be much stronger than the spirit of gold rank. The man says what an eloquent kid he is, and then asks if he really thought that if he got here, he could defeat a representative of epic rank. He is so naive, so the spirit will show him what the power of an epic rank heroic spirit means. Squeezing his sword harder, which is filled with flames, the man begins to move quickly around the arena, leaving a trail of fire behind him. This, was he in the arena in a second? No, as his spiritual energy reached E rank, the amount of spiritual energy was now 400 points. The spirit starts saying that just now his speeches were so arrogant, so they should see what he will say when he gets there. Immediately, other spirits begin to discuss it. Lin Wei waited until they were distracted and sneaked up to the guy himself. How pathetic he is. Lin Wei reached the S rank during his lifetime. One of the spirits suggests that in the same way. For the first time in hundreds of years, a junior came here. But the epic rank is too heavy for students. However, he has an incredible physique, as if referring to all classes at once. The young man is really an extraordinary talent. Instantly, another one appears, who starts shouting. What the hell is Lin Wei doing? The guy has passed. And how dare he, because it's against the rules. Let this miser let them check it out too. Meng thinks the epic rank is so powerful that he was able to move him to the arena of the dream world. Immediately, the sword that held the spirit is discarded and was soon stuck into the stone. The spirit asks him to start, adding that in the arena of the world of dreams, they both have the rank of E. Being in the same position, if he makes at least one mistake, but Bei will pass the test. The guy grins and decides to ask that they have the same rank, but he doesn't even use a weapon in battle with him. Does he really think that relying on the experience of the s rank god of war, he can really defeat him? The spirit is surprised to notice that this is an incomparably skillful swordsmanship, and is a student capable of such a thing. Even with a weapon in hand, it would be difficult to resist such a merciless attack, especially. Meng strikes fast and sharp blows with his sword, constantly moving in space. The man shouts obscenities and says he can't dodge. How is this possible? Are the skills he shows even stronger than his own? It feels like he's fighting a war god of at least SS rank. He had never seen such a person even in his lifetime. A true genius. The hero asks not to worry about him, but at the same time to give everything in this battle. 
The spirit crunches its knuckles, flexing its fists, and then he calls the sword back to him again, pulling it out of the stone. He shouts at him to attack, raising his weapon to strike, and immediately their weapons begin to collide. There were countless blows, but at some point, Jin just directs his blade sharply forward. He strikes at someone else's sword, which the spirit subsequently just dropped out of his hands. Grinning, he reports that there were ten blows, and then adds that the man lost by lowering the weapon. The spirit calmly agrees with him, and the guy thinks to himself that it was the perfect passing of the test. This should be enough to get the accompanying epic rank talent. With him, the starting point of this life will be much higher than in the past. And as soon as Shen is about to say something, he notices with surprise. And where is the spirit itself and how is his talent? Did he overdo it so much that he disappeared with the ends? The epic spirit couldn't do that. And then they both find themselves in the corridors beyond the gate. The spirits are surprised to notice that he has returned. And so quickly, has the test really ended? But Lin Wei didn't transfer the talent, so the guy lost. But why hasn't he regained consciousness yet? He's still in the arena of the dream world, so Lin Wei hasn't completed the test yet. The man immediately exclaims that he has lost. The spirits were immediately alarmed. What? He lost to this brat. Lin Wei is probably joking. They were both ranky, it's impossible, he most likely deliberately succumbed. He reports that there were no giveaways, and he really suffered a complete defeat. This young man's skills are not inferior in level to their own, so he has a plan. After a while, the spirits start screaming that Lin Wei has gone crazy, but they can really try. Moreover, his words alone are not enough to convince them. One has an idea how to make this plan even more abnormal. Six spirits appear in front of the guy. This, six epic rank spirits appeared at once. He didn't expect that there would be so many heroic spirits of epic rank in the City of Dawn, in the most remote place powered by starlight. What fierce battles were once fought here? One of the spirits thinks that even at the sight of all six of them, he did not blink an eye, and then in his thoughts asks the guy to show what his courage is supported by. The old man calls out to the young man and says that he has defeated Lin Wei and received their approval, and now they want to offer him to pass a higher rank test. Let him fight them, the six epic spirits. If he overcomes them, then everyone will grant him their accompanying talent, and if not, then he will leave with nothing. The guy asks again if he understood everything that if he overcomes them, he will be able to get the epic talents of each class, because it's the same. The man interrupts him and informs him that he should think carefully. He can also leave now with the talent of an epic rank warrior. One of the girls says that judging by his appearance, he does not have enough strength, so she asks him to give up and leave with what he has. The second agrees with her, adding that she thought they would have fun now. Meng laughs and shouts out how interesting all this is, and he understands what they are talking about, but the challenge has already been thrown. Their determination to resist countless monsters and create a better world is still strong. He says he accepts the challenge and then asks them to start. The old man says how self-confident Bei and the other man adds that he is also arrogant, he likes it. The guy asks them to start already, getting into a fighting stance. The spirits do the same, and the main one just asks the young man to be careful. Jin thinks that the six elders have known each other for many years. They definitely have mutual understanding and some kind of agreement. First he has to destroy it all. First, he will deal with this one, who is constantly hiding in the dark. Thief, the guy suddenly appears out of nowhere from behind, intending to attack at any moment and shouting, let him taste it. Sneaked up from behind, archer reflexes are no joke. Sheng exclaims that with the same rank, in the battle of a warrior and a thief, the second remains at a disadvantage. The spirit can only shout in surprise. Immediately, he is dealt a huge blow, from the force of which he completely flies off into the nearest wall. An epic ranked thief leaves the fight. The man notices that one one was struck, but he will overcome them all this way. The old man asks him not to be so self-confident, because now they will fight in earnest. Bei uses the speed of the thief and the reaction of the archer, simultaneously saying that it's not so difficult, and the magician's insight also helps a lot. But then a bright and blue fire stretches right past his face, from which he frowns. What? The old man is surprised to notice that the paralyzing lightning strike did not work. The knight's physique and will block magic. He turns up next to him and says that a magician at close range is as fragile as a piece of glass for a warrior. Immediately, an epic rank mage leaves the fight. At the same moment, the young man is distracted by the arrows flying towards him, and then reflects them and heads towards the archer. The huge strength of a warrior is amazing. An archer of epic rank instantly leaves the fight. The man shouts an expletive and says he can't keep track of him. The girl asks him to detain Meng, and she will call a huge bear that will crush him. And soon a huge bear really appears in the arena. Another spirit uses the sacred light deceleration on him. Jin realizes that he can't move. An impressive beast reaches out to him with its clawed paw. But when there were a couple of centimeters left, the hero stops him. 
The essence of the summoner is affinity with the summoned monster. And then the bear suddenly strikes at the spirits, freeing the guy from the bonds. A man can only whisper how this is possible before an epic ranked knight leaves the fight. The girl is surprised to notice whether she really lost control of the bear. Once close, he asks her if there is a chance for a summoner who has lost his keeper to change the outcome of the battle. Soon, the summoner of epic rank leaves the battle. Lin Wei soon appears, to whom Sheng informs that it has been too long, because his comrades have already lost. So does he intend to continue. But the man refuses, explaining that he has already defeated him earlier, so he sees no point in repeating. The old man calls out to the gifted youth and says that he has passed the test with six representatives of epic rank. His body, will, fighting spirit, all this is far superior to any subject, including each of them during his lifetime, so let him accept their talents. Bei himself thinks about what it means. He will still get the talents of each class, but will they really all be able to coexist in one body? No, they begin to merge together. Talents are mixed and the aura emanating from them already exceeds the epic rank. The archer wonders if the accompanying talent is higher than the epic rank. Then what kind of rank is it at all? Hell, at the last stage of the merger, there is a very high probability of failure. Just a little more, he can't fail. He asks them in the name of Meng Jinsheng to unite and shed starlight. Immediately, something like a rainbow and silver heart appears in his hands. Since the appearance of the Awakened, various accompanying talents have appeared, iron, bronze, silver. In the minds of most, the gold rank was already considered the highest rank of talent. As for the epic rank, for most ordinary people, it was just a fairy tale. But is there anything higher than epic rank? Bay exclaims that this is an unprecedented mythical talent. The mythical rank is the heart of a brave man. The heart of a brave man is the strongest talent. It manifests itself in the heat of battle. After defeating the enemy, you can get its source, restore strength and increase power. The owner of the heart of a brave man bravely breaks through difficulties. In a desperate situation, he can ignite the spirit and blood, increasing his power by ten times. The old man says that he did not expect that there is something above the epic rank. They are honored to see such a miracle. After so many years of waiting, they have fought a worthy opponent and now they can leave without regrets. He calls out loudly to Bi Jin and informs him that he hopes that the guy will faithfully serve the City of Dawn and the whole world for the sake of Starlight. Immediately, the flame that was on the columns begins to fade. Pouring out some liquid, Shen says that he will definitely fulfill their wish. And then he leaves, leaving behind a book and sick. Meanwhile, the students exclaim in surprise, Yes, this is the golden rank. Is this the famous daughter of the Lin family? No wonder she got the gold rank. Someone tried so hard to get the bronze rank. Is that the difference between them and geniuses? She is immediately encouraged by Gong, who says that as expected from the first genius of the Lin family, she received a gold rank accompanying talent, just amazing. The girl says that everything is thanks to the elder Zai Gong and she is not at all amazing. The archer calls out to Lin Zai and says what a modest person she is. It's a golden rank. In the city of Dawn this happens once every ten years. And after all, some of the guild of warriors boasted of their strength before the test, and now. The man immediately calls out to Zai Gong and exclaims that his archer's guild can only rely on luck. Sooner or later the warrior's guild will also have a chance to get a gold rank. He grins and asks if it's true, and then adds that he can't wait for it. Zai only awkwardly notices that the two are starting to quarrel again. And then he wonders where the guy is, if he hasn't returned from the test yet. Gong says that the gate will close soon, and he will inform that the test is completed, but then suddenly someone calls Uncle Zai. Lin replies that it's not time yet and they need to wait for someone. The archer says that if someone has not returned yet, it means that his test has failed. The girl says he's coming now. Gong replies that he was thinking about who she was talking about. And this is this garbage Bi Jin. He was just hiding there to avoid the test with the spirits. Sai blushes and notices to himself that it means his name is Bi Jin after all. Immediately other guys make fun of him, shouting that he is flawed. Duan calls out to the guy and asks what rank he got in this trial. And then he notices this bright light that surrounds his body. Yes, it's a gold rank. The students immediately gasp in surprise and exclaim that this time there are already two gold ranks. The heart of a brave man is a talent that allows you to expose any rank to the light. A demonstration of the gold rank, just like in his previous life, is quite enough. This should attract the necessary attention from the warrior's guild. Shang calls the rest a bunch of idiots and asks them to stop forever trying to make fun of others. Let them think better about how to improve their skills. The fat man swears and says that they cross the road to the future big shot of the city of Dawn. The girl also thinks about whether Bi Jin really got the gold rank, but he also went to the very depths and the rank that can be obtained there. Meng notices her gaze and shushes her, urging her to be silent. Lin thinks about how many secrets he has. He was in the very depths of the lands of the gifts of starlight. He decides to call out to the bearded man and asked if he had seen enough before he reports that he has passed this test. He calls him an asshole who calls him names because he's the same. 
And then he says that he is well done and it's not for nothing that their guild of warriors put so much effort into his training. The students pick up, calling him so shameless because they didn't even know about this youngster before, and he also calls him a warrior in whom they invested their strength. Zai Gong replies that he doesn't care and adds that the appearance of two gold-ranked fighters at this test is already a historic event. This needs to be reported. The crowd on the street literally explodes. What? This time, two have already received the gold rank? It's amazing. This is a historic event. Who are these two? The man replies that one is the daughter of the Lin family, Lin Zai, but this was expected, and the second has some unfamiliar name, Bei Jin. Fan Bing immediately explodes, clarifying whether Bei Jin really got the gold rank. It's impossible. The city of Dawn is a guild of warriors. A variety of guys immediately start discussing him, asking every now and then if it's Bi Jin. One of the test participants who received the gold rank is gifted, how promising. Even the girl says what a handsome guy he is and that he is just her type. Young and cute, I would have eaten him. Others fart and say that this handsome man may not like girls. Someone even adds that his daughter has just turned 17, and she suits him so well. Sheng himself thinks to himself that he seems to have underestimated the influence of the gold rank. Immediately he is hailed and handed an envelope, informing him that everything is ready. Duan informs him that from now on he is a full-fledged awakened member of their guild. He, as a representative of the Warriors Guild of the City of Dawn, welcomes him. After some time, the man asks Ming to follow him, as he needs to get a suitable reward for him. The guy nods and thinks that it seems that the guild treats its members and participants well. Soon the treasurer of the Warriors Guild, Chen Guan, appears, who calls out to the elder Duan Jia and asks if this is really Bei Jin and then calls him a very respectable young man. He reports that this is an award accompanying the gold rank, so the man asks Mr. Zha to check it out. He clarifies whether it is an unpredictable fist blade, and then adds that it is one of the strongest skills of the warrior class, and Treasurer Chen is so kind. Huan only says that their guild does not often have an awaken with a gold rank, so they should put all their efforts into his development. Also 10 star stones of the initial rank. What a wonderful reward for the golden rank. He once had only one such stone. Jin, reading the book, understands that this skill, but he is hailed by Chen, who informs him that in the first days of awakening, learning new skills is the most effective, so he advises to start as soon as possible. He happily agrees, adding that he is already in a hurry, while he thinks to himself that this is very interesting. After some time, the treasurer is met by Fan Bing, calling out to his brother and wondering how everything went. He reports that he himself is more reliable in solving problems than he is. That redone book has already been handed over to Bi Jin. He will start learning the skill and in a couple of days he will become insane. At that moment, he will send a request to the guild about a duel, and then Bean will get rid of him in front of everyone, without a single miss. The guy says that Brother Chen always does everything right. And if he gets rid of Bei Jin, then the inheritance of the Bei family will go to him, and he will thank him for the perfumes. The treasurer only replies that they are all just following orders from above. He will be able to figure out the reward himself. Fan just laughs and turns to his brother, saying that even being a genius with a gold rank, he will still die at his hands, and everything that belongs to the Bei family will become his. Meng, flipping through the book, notices that he is afraid that the one who remade the unpredictable fist blade was also not simple. Even Duan Zha with his C rank could not recognize the problems. If someone else had been in his place, then trouble would have come out. Judging by Chen Guang's actions, he is also involved in all this. But does this situation have anything to do with the idiot Fan Bei? And also this Song Kang, the previous head of the awakened community and the disappearance of Bei Jin's parents. Interestingly, it turns out that there are so many behind-the-scenes intrigues and mysterious personalities revolving around the Bei family. Shen agrees out loud that he will play along with them. The defect from instilling such talent to a beginner is very primitive, so he can easily win it back. They want to play a ridiculous situation with such a trick, but when the time comes, if Du and Jia is around, Chen Guan will not be able to intervene. Moreover, he has these ten star stones. He's just going to need them. Star stones are crystals containing the concentrated power of the Stargate. They are divided into initial rank, intermediate, highest, and so on. By absorbing the energy of the Stargate through these crystals, awakened ones can quickly develop their power and improve their skills. This is considered a rare treasure, although he understands all the skills of a high, and even a divine level. But if he wants to quickly improve his strength, he must start from the beginning. Although he did not study it in his previous life, but Sheng knows that the unpredictable fist blade is a very strong entry-level skill, it can be used up to D rank. Although it is quite difficult to develop this skill, it does not mean anything to him. It is necessary to use the fist like a wedge, rotate it as if this part of the flesh is part of the sword. 
The concept of this skill is very unusual. Several key points of using spiritual energy are corrupted, but he will be able to correct it. Jin hopes that 10 crystals of the initial rank will be enough for him to fully master this skill. He calls himself to start by concentrating. When blue rays start reaching for his fist, he shouts that it hurts a lot, as if someone is scraping his bones. Pink light begins to wrap around the fist. After some time, he manages to open his hand, which causes a flash. Unpredictable fist blade is the strongest basic skill of the warrior class, the difficulty of instilling which he slightly underestimated. Even though he had awakened all six classes at the same time, his strength and flexibility had improved dramatically. But if Jin finishes the training in one go, he can damage his hands. Here in 10 days or half a month it is possible. If any of the other warriors wanted to master this skill, it would take them at least one year. Meng adds with a grin that it's only more interesting this way. He shouts out motivational words to himself again, adding that it's just a basic skill. He orders himself to concentrate, which causes his fist to light up again with a bright pink light. Soon, this light completely copies the outline of a huge sword. Immediately, the guy throws up a shield and picks up a sword, and after that, he uses the skill of an F-rank warrior, an unpredictable fist blade. It was not in vain that he spent 10 star stones of the initial rank and a whole day to fully master it, and when he moves to the next rank, this skill will also rise to a higher level. Well, since he's finished, he can go out. After that, he is met by Fan Bing, who calls out to be Jin and says that he is back. This is a challenge to a duel to determine which of them will become the heir of the Bay family. The guy asks him loudly if he accepts his challenge. An official challenge. Many immediately crowded in. Meng says how funny he is, and then adds that he is now also an awakened one, so the inheritance will remain his. Are there any more questions? And why on earth would he get into this business, such an ungrateful brat? He is immediately supported by other guys. Isn't that Fan Bing? He was raised by the Bei family. So this is the little rat. How dare he bicker with Bi Jin over the legacy of the Bi family? He caused a scandal in their guild. He should be expelled. The guy immediately asks them to look carefully at this paper, because there is actually an official seal of the awakened community. This is the Bay family's business, no need to make a fuss. Other questions immediately follow. How did the community allow this conflict to arise at all? Yes, there are some blockheads sitting at the top, who solve things in a black way. The other replies that he should watch his words and not bring trouble on himself. Fan says that the estate of the Bay family has already been rewritten in his name. If he does not accept the challenge, then he automatically renounces all claims to the estate. And this is his house, where the Bay family has raised him all these years. Shen realizes to himself that he is angry because the memories of that youngster affect him so much. This self-willed bastard is not even worth his anger. Dean asks him, well, is he ready to accept a life and death challenge? But then the paper immediately breaks out of his hands, which only makes the fan blink in surprise. He asks in amazement when Jin managed to do this. After reading the document, Meng informs that he accepts his challenge. His brother thinks that he didn't even notice someone else's movements. Are such changes also related to the awakening of the golden rank? It's good that he edited the teachings of the unpredictable fist blade. He will wait until, in the midst of a battle, this idiot suddenly becomes controlled and then his end will be near. A second later, they are standing opposite each other in a half-empty corridor. Immediately, the fan uses the E-rank skill, Shadow, framing himself in green, and then the bronze rank talent, Jerk. After that, the E-rank skill is Snake Attack, but his strike attempt is interrupted by Jin's block. He asks with a laugh, is it really the same attack again? Maybe he will come up with something new. Bean is only surprised to notice that he grabbed him with one hand, but he dodged as much as possible. But he is already shouting to him that this is their wonderful modified skill and then uses an unpredictable fist blade, sending Bean flying into the ground. During the rebound, the brother manages to get back on his feet. He asks in amazement why nothing happened. Immediately, the crowd supports him, shouting that Bi Jin is doing well and that so let him. This Fan Bin, let the thieves' guild see their power. Fan Bing is just trash, let them not mention their guilds, they have nothing to do with him. Duan says it's not for nothing that this is a gold rank that appears once every 10 years. He mastered the unpredictable fist blade in just one day and has already brought it to such a level that, without straining, he can crush an E-rank thief. Another man asks him if it's not common for the gifted. Soon Meng pushes off the ground with his foot and strikes another blow to Bean, who tries to cover himself with his hands. But the latter manages to push back in time and leave. Jin says out loud that he did not expect that he was so lively. The latter asks him if he really didn't think that his brother would wear a protective gold vest. He's just an insignificant F-rank warrior. What can he do at all? The crowd immediately huffs and shouts how disgusting it is. He challenged him to a fight and put on a protective vest himself. The other asks, and what's the big deal? Because anyone can buy one for themselves. The rules do not prohibit wearing protection. 
Ben calls out to Bijin and says that he was very lucky last time, but today he has to die. The thief then charges forward at the warrior using his double snake attack. The latter turns to his brother and says that he is just a narrow-minded jerk, and then hits him with his skill, but the fan manages to substitute his blades. Amazed, he decides to ask how he managed to fend off the double snake attack so easily. Jin asks back if he thought he didn't know he was wearing a vest. The guy realized this from the first blow and just decided to play along with him. Seeing a glimmer of hope, it's very unpleasant to be disappointed again, right? But no mercy now. Let him feel the real power of the unpredictable fist blade. In an instant, Jin strikes his blow right in the face of his ex-brother. And then he begins to inflict faster, numerous blows on his chest and body. And after the last blow again flies into the face, which is why Bean just leans back to the ground. His body flies off to the side and hits the lockers. The thief whispers why nothing happens, and Jin asks if he is really interested in why nothing happens to him after mastering this skill. He answers in amazement that he knows about everything. The hero grins and adds that if he is so stupid, it does not mean that the others are the same. Sheng leans over to him and calls out to Fan Bing, informing him that he will let him live, but let him tell who is behind this and about his parents, then he will spare him. But the interlocutor abruptly begins to tremble and clenches his lips, and then begins to cough loudly on the floor. This, did he have poison in his mouth? The brother informs Bi Jin that he will never know what happened to his parents. Even if he is gifted, his powers are weak, and he will be crushed as well as a small ant. And then Bean drops dead to the floor. The selfish bastard agrees to die, but not to reveal the truth. It seems that those behind all this have a lot of power in the city of Dawn. Now that Fan Bing has died, they will definitely take the next step and it puts him in danger again. And to hell with it, he can't wait to see how strong those who are hiding behind the scenes are. But right now he's only a negligible F rank, he's very weak. But given the situation, increasing combat power is a top priority. The outskirts of the awakened community. Bi Jin is sitting in the room, concentrating, which can be told by the blue stripes. He concentrates on the star stone. Soon it completely disappears from his hands, being absorbed. Shang notices that this physique is amazing. The rate of energy absorption is too high. He spent the last star stone. When he received the F rank, his spiritual energy was equal to 105, and today it is already 246 units. In theory, one star stone is equal to 10 units of spiritual value. But this is just a theory, in fact. During the mastery of the awakened skill, most of the energy is wasted. The percentage of absorption is 10%. In fact, for an ordinary awakened person when mastering a skill, if the percentage of energy absorption reaches 10%, then this is already a good result. If the percentage is 30% or higher, then he will already be considered a gifted awakened. After spending 20 star stones of the initial rank, he gained 141 points. That is, the percentage of absorption is 70%. In the previous life, even when using the secret technique of the epic rank infinite Gong Kai, the percentage of absorption reached only 40%. It seems that in this body this technique will reveal itself in all its glory. What a pity that this place is only the outskirts of the awakened community, so the stellar energy is limited here. Otherwise, during this time, it seems to him, he would have been able to rise to 300 units of spiritual value. Yes, and Meng understands that this dream of Kang is really asking for it. First he dealt with Fan Bang. And then he went to return the estate of the Bei family. There, the man said that after the estate passed into the possession of Fan Bing, it no longer has any relation to the Bei family. Upon Fan Bin's death, the estate is transferred to the possession of the awakened community. He has awakened, but is only in F rank, so the dream says that he will allocate him a community apartment, and then orders him to disappear. The guy grins and adds out loud that for all of them this estate is such a tasty morsel. But Song Kang is a C rank awakened. With his current strength, he won't be able to resist him. It is necessary to improve the skill, and then see what and how. However, he miscalculated one thing, Jean realizes with amazement. There are funds left in the account of the Bay family, equal to the amount that will only be enough for 20 star stones of the initial rank. It seems that over the years they have spent a lot of effort to make up for the shortcomings of his body. He himself could not have thought that the day would come when he would have a headache because of money problems. These are the cases. The guy raises his hand, in which there is a card. After that, a projection appears from it, showing its status. Full name, Bijin, class, F-rank warrior, merit, zero. Need more star stones. We need to familiarize ourselves with the guild's tasks. Maybe we can earn some extra money. Tasks of E-rank are displayed on the projection. In one, they ask to return the underwear of Lady Lo. Who dropped it in a dark tunnel, the reward is 1,001 merit. The second asks to clear the outskirts of the city from stray epic skeleton dogs, a reward of 15,0 and 2 merit. The third asks to explore the ruins at the southern wall of the city, a reward of 10,000 and 10 merit. The guy says out loud that the rewards of these tasks are good, but they give little merit. 
100 merit points are exchanged for one star stone of the initial rank. Maybe he should try D-rank tasks, maybe something will work out. But successfully completing a D-rank quest right after waking up will attract a lot of attention. Now he is under the wing of the guild as a warrior, so no one will dare to touch him, but if you overdo it, then all these important bigwigs will immediately hatch, and he can't openly resist them yet. How can he earn money without attracting much attention? He pokes at the screen, where an E-rank task is displayed, where they are asked to explore the surroundings of the moss forest, and the reward is 20,020 merits. There seems to be something interesting in this forest. After some time, the suburb is the location of the Awakened, standing near the sign. Meng says to himself that the moss forest is in this direction, but then Lin suddenly calls out to him. She asks if he also accepted the moss forest assignment. The guy is amazed to realize that this is C, and then agrees with her out loud. The girl immediately replies what a coincidence it is, and then invites him to join their ranks. He awkwardly notices in his head that this girl has come so close. But then Lin Zai is hailed by a man who says that she should first ask the commander before calling someone to the team. This is an E-ranked knight, Lawson, who says that for an E-ranked team, the F-rank will only be a burden. The girl immediately turns to Lawson, saying that Bi-jin is not a burden, he is. The knight is surprised to find out if he is really Bi-jin. But then another man appears, who tells Lawson what an ignoramus he is, because he is a participant in the test, who this time, like Lin Zai, received a gold rank. This is an E-rank archer. He greets him and introduces himself to Tunbo, congratulating him on joining the team. Shing replies that he is so polite, and then greets the Tongbo commander himself. Lawson asks, and what is it about the golden rank? Because after all, he is now an ordinary F-rank warrior, and for their team it's just a burden. But the archer only addresses him and asks him not to talk nonsense, and then reports that it's time to move out. The surroundings of the moss forest, Lin Zai directs his bow and arrow towards the enemy. Immediately, a bright and fiery arrow cuts through the monster, but does not do much to it. This is an E-rank monster, a twisted ebony. Soon, Lawson appears in front of her, who uses his shield against the tree's attack, and next to him is Tunbo, who also uses his fire arrow. Soon, a huge explosion is heard at the place where the monster was. The man reports that the commander dealt with this E-rank monster so easily, and then he calls out to Bi Jin and asks if he has now realized that an E-rank assignment is not always within the power of an ordinary F-rank. But then Lin Zai enters the conversation, who asks Lawson what he's talking about, because the first arrow was hers, that is, he wants to say that she, F-rank, is too worthless for this case. He immediately refuses, answering that he is not talking about her, it was said to Bi Jin. Zai also says that if he says that about Bi Jin, then about her too, because he is F-rank, and she, in his opinion, is not. But then Tunbo gets distracted by something. An ambush attack. He shouts to Lin Zai to be careful. A sharp piece of wood is directed towards her face, which makes the girl squint and blush. But the knot breaks the mane in time with just one hand. The guy points to the side and informs that he was there. An E-rank thief from the Tunbo team is immediately called to investigate. And then you can see a twisted tree and E-rank archer. The guy strikes hard and fast, immediately cutting the monster into pieces. After some time, he reappears in the field of vision of his comrades. Lin Zai blushes and thanks Bei Jin, to which he replies that they are the same team. Lawson notices to himself that this worthless ballast is constantly finding ways to roll up to Lin Zai. What a freak. And Shen only thinks that he thought so. There's something wrong with this part of the moss forest. The radiance of the stargate and the breath of darkness, the struggle between these two opposites never ends. As long as there is darkness under the starlight, and there will be glimpses of starlight among the darkness, there will be a balance of everything that exists. Small fluctuations from the breath of darkness in any area cause the local monsters to manifest. That's why more and more monsters are appearing in the outskirts of the moss forest. Of course, he is more interested not in this, but in the fact that as darkness thickens, more and more unusual treasures will appear. This is his real goal. He notices that Tunbo is heading forward with some kind of device. The man says that the last star beacon has been installed. The task of exploring the surroundings of the moss has been completed. He says that they are all well done, and then orders them to form up and return to the camp. Go back. Jin understands that this is great, because a little later he will come back here alone. Lawson calls out to the commander and asks if it's really time to return, because this is an E-rank award. It's not enough to divide them all. The archer tries to stop him. But the knight continues, saying that their team is strong enough, they can go a little deeper and see what else they can collect, then it will definitely be enough for them all. Tunbo still agrees, answering that it is possible to try, and then asks if anyone has any objections. The team immediately responds that they obey the commander. Lawson calls out to Bi Jin and says that when they have moved deeper into the moss forest, he and his F rank will only become a burden for them, so the man orders him to leave the team. 
Mang only thinks that this jerk is constantly looking for reasons to kick him out of the team. Lin Zai immediately stands up for him, saying that Bei Jin has earned the gold rank, his skills are not what he thinks. But the commander calls out to the girl and informs her that the Moss Forest is an E-rank area. The danger level there is much higher than she assumes. With her on the team, he's already under a lot of stress, and if they also take Bei Jin, she tries to somehow object to him. But Shang tells a friend that Commander Tongbo is right. His forces are not enough. The most reasonable thing, of course, would be to leave the team. And he thinks to himself that he just wants to go alone. So let this Cretan rejoice and not do anything. The archer turns to the guy and informs him that their team's strength is limited, so he asks for forgiveness. But he adds that he will share the reward for the task in the vicinity of the forest and for him. He replies that there is nothing wrong with this, and he himself understands the level of his forces, so he thanks Commander Tunbo. Lawson thinks that at last this freak will leave. Left behind, Meng says that the dark aura of the forest has intensified, and it is quite dangerous for an E-ranked team to rush deep into the forest. Well, it's unlikely that anything bad will happen to Lin Zai. Those two humble fellows weren't E-rank awakened, they're D-rank. It's most likely the bodyguards that the Lin family sent to guard her, but the little girl doesn't know about it. But he's finally alone, so it's worth getting down to business. 